And this is a story of one recent attempt to go faster than ever before in a piston-powered propeller airplane. When it rolled off the assembly line during World War II, it was a stock P-51D model bound for combat. But since 1966, the former Mustang fighter plane has been modified and specially designed as a pure air racer. And during its five years as the Red Baron, the plane has beaten the fastest propeller-driven machines in the sky. Its assault on the world piston speed record will be made by 27-year-old pilot Steve Hinton. Oh, let me accelerate on out there, 390 miles per hour. Summer of 79, the plane's aerodynamics and engines are tested under the toughest conditions. Owner Ed Browning has installed a new Rolls Royce Griffin engine with twice the horsepower of the original Merlin. And now, it's ready for the greatest challenge of all. The scene is 30 miles from Tonopah, Nevada. The dry, flat, desolate area known as Mud Lake, site of the Red Baron's attempt to capture first place in the record book. And it was it was going over 400 then, and I was still level. Just getting ready to line up to where I was going to start down here, and. Uh, just started shaking. And then I said it was smoking. I decided that the airport was the best place. Another engine. Ed Browning has experienced broken engines before. But this time, a gaping hole in the block was caused by a loose counterweight. It means that a totally new engine will have to be installed by the Red Baron crew overnight. Another race against time. Place the engine in time, the Red Baron crew works as if with a single brain. Even Steve Hinton joins in as the first counter-rotating propeller is removed. In their 20s, the young team members are virtually grown up with warbirds such as the Red Baron. Directing the operation is crew chief Randy Scoville. Also on hand is Bruce Bolin, who helped design the plane, and systems designer Pete Law, cleaning the carburetor and checking for more leaks. The entire team is bolstered by the memory of their consistent racing wins in Reno, Florida, and Mojave, California. A few months before in Mojave with the new cowling, the Red Baron faced tough competition from the likes of this standard P-51D model. Another threat was this British Hawker Sea Fury. Also on hand was the Baron's arch-rival John Crocker in his own highly modified P-51. It looks like the RB moving quickly into that number one position. Steve Hinton just barely holding on, and now he squirts out into the front in that number one position. There's the Red Baron at first. He's got a pretty good lead with your airplane. How much is he turning now? How fast? Oh, he's probably doing about 400, roughly 400. I think he's got the power a little more on this afternoon. On the straightaway, we'd be doing probably about 460, 470. 6470, you'd still have a little reserve, right? Oh, yeah, 1,000 horsepower. With that victory, Steve's thoughts flew ahead to the world speed record attempt at Mud Lake. But the situation here now is one of steady, unbroken labor in the midst of crisis. Ed looking on. Steve wondering if his long-awaited attempt will have to be canceled. Randy supervising the complex replacement. With the moon high over the dry lake bed, the crew begins to roll out the Red Baron to see the result of its teamwork. engine fails, the world speed record attempt will be over. It's 
the final run of his first attempt to surpass Darrell's 482. Officially, the results are indeed a new world record. But how much more can the Red Baron be pushed? Yeah, you're, well, you're on the razor's edge. That's right this minute. Yeah. Miles an hour and we're not. Ed Browning wants to go for 500. But crew chief Randy Scoville wants to make sure everything's perfect before the attempt. And so the Baron is rolled in for the night to be checked and rechecked before the biggest push of its glorious career. At 10 in the morning, it's perfect weather. As Steve and his girlfriend, Karen Maloney, walk out to the plane. On hand from Idaho Falls, Ed Browning's family is out on the field as well. And the always concerned, Randy Scoville. I could feel the tension along with Ed's wife, Frankie. Get him. I'm right here. I'm right here. Anyway, good luck, Chris. Okay. See you later. Steve is off to try and better his own world record to possibly even fly a four-lap average of over 500 miles an hour. Right on the lake, just coming in. Plenty rough out here this morning. Everything looks good. Well, about a mile right now, or two miles. He's two miles out from the course. Okay, we're lining up now. Right on the course. Here we go. At the same power setting, the next unofficial speed is a whopping 504 miles per hour. Okay, the Barons looks good from here. What do you hear? Second pass is good, and he's through it. You got two to go. Two to go. Using more power, an astounding unofficial third run of 508 miles an hour. Says it's rougher and blazes. Is that what he said, blazes? Yeah, yeah sure, yes. <laughs> okay, the Baron's about five miles out now. He's got enough gas for how many? Four, and that's it. Four, and that's it. And now, for the final run, Steve pushes it to a power setting the Red Baron has never before used. Absolute world record. But what counts is the average time. Back now, airport, Steve. Beautiful, Steve. I think that's him over there. Look at him go. He's coming down, he's going to make a pass. Right over the prop. See him? He's not the kind of guy to wag his wings if he didn't feel pretty good about it, either. Yeah, it looks good right now. We're going to check the chopper for her. He's coming back in with the results. Official results are obtained by specially designed timing cameras at both ends of the three-kilometer course. Each camera records the time that the plane passed by. Then, a scanning device allows for exact measurement. And finally, the difference between the two times is used to calculate the speed. Suspense is summed up by the expression on Karen's face. 499-018. Just short of 500, but surpassing their own record by 10 miles an hour, a new world mark. 